In this video, I'm going to share some valuable tips and give you an introduction to a number of features in Unity that will make level design easier for you. We're going to look at multiple different features, and since I'm going to keep it relatively short, I will be leaving some links in the description box of this video so that you can learn more about each individual feature. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the links in the description after watching this video. And now with that being said, let's start this video off with our first tip using ProBuilder. ProBuilder is a unique hybrid of 3D modeling and level design tools optimized for building simple geometry, but also capable of detailed editing and UV unwrapping. Using ProBuilder, we can create a shape and then modify it. We can select a face, vertex, or an edge of our shape to then scale, rotate, and move as we want to. We can even create shapes like stairs and pick the number of steps, set a custom curvature, and so much more. I normally use ProBuilder to just create the shape that I want and then decorate it using PolyBrush. Speaking of which, let's take a deeper look into using PolyBrush. If you haven't heard of PolyBrush before, it enables you to blend textures and colors, sculpt meshes, and scatter objects directly in the Unity Editor. And in Unity 2019.2, a new feature was added to PolyBrush called Prefab Scatter Mode. The prefab scatter mode allows you to paint prefabs on a game object similar to the way you can paint grass on a terrain. And since PolyBrush allows for painting 3D objects, this means we can level up our design. <laughs> Pun totally intended, by the way. I'll see myself out. <laughs> so we can now paint 3D objects on surfaces like grass, trees, or other vegetation, and any other object we want to. If you want to add some rocks or pebbles into your scene, well, go ahead and just drag in the prefab that you want to paint into the PolyBrush window, modify the settings such as brush radius, strength, and object scale, and simply start painting on surfaces. And I actually made a full overview video on the new updates to PolyBrush, including the prefab scatter mode, so make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to watch it after this video. In that video, I was able to make a small planet using a sphere and design it only using PolyBrush for sculpting the sphere, painting it with colors, and of course adding in vegetation and rocks. But back to this video, the second trick we're going to take a look at is how to use the Terrain Tools package. If you haven't heard of this package before, it was introduced in Unity 2019.1, and it contains over 50 new sculpting tools, as well as a utility toolbox to streamline terrain workflow. After you import the Terrain Tools package from the Package Manager, when you create a terrain, you will see new tools you can use when shaping your terrain. Additionally, we have added multiple new brushes, which enable you to easily stamp mountains on your terrain. There are also options like brush rotation, so you can be super precise and get the results you want. Moving on, in Unity 2019.3, our environment team added the ability to create holes in your terrains. Terrain holes are a part of the terrain system, which means that we can go to the tools list and find paint holes. After we pick the option, we can paint the holes just like we paint in textures, and they will appear. The holes also work seamlessly with the terrain collider component, so that when we paint in the holes, the player can walk through them. Using the Universal Render Pipeline, I always finish up by adding some post-processing. In Unity 2019.3, the Lightweight Render Pipeline was renamed to Universal and received a revamped version of the post-processing effects. If your project doesn't make use of the Universal Render Pipeline yet, you can go to Window, enter the Package Manager, and find the Universal Render Pipeline in here. There are, of course, many more features you can get access to using Universal RP, so make sure to check out the link in the description for more information. After installing the package, we can start adding in our effects. I normally add color grading to slightly increase the saturation and make the world feel more alive and colorful. I also add bloom to bring out highlights in the lighting. It's also a good technique to disable and re-enable individual effects so you can keep a track of the original results and don't add too much. You can of course add more effects if you want to, but I think this looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. As you can see, we can easily create levels for our game using these features in Unity. Let me know in the comment section if you guys are working on a game right now and which one of these features you find most useful for level design. Let us also know if you have any more tips and tricks you want to share because some of the best suggestions come from you, the community. We have also added some useful links to the description box of this video, so if you're interested in learning more about each feature that we covered, go ahead and check them out. And on that, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.